Hey guys, welcome to the Thursday video. As you can see, we're back in my second driveway with a different Mazda pickup this time. If you haven't seen my last video that was over here, it was titled, My B2600i 4x4 is Illegal. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. We've already shot a review of the little red truck that could, but today we're gonna talk about five things that I hate about my Mazda B2000. So let's get right into it. So the first thing on my list is going to be all of this emissions junk right here. And to be honest with you, I couldn't even tell you what half of it does. Back in the 80s, before fuel injection was really standard on a lot of vehicles, they did a lot of different things to meet different emissions regulations on carbureted vehicles. And it just made a rat's nest of a mess. I'm gonna pan over here and we're gonna talk about some of these things. So you can see these trucks were just like a zoo of vacuum lines and hoses. These three pipes right here go back into the carburetor from the exhaust and all of this is just a mess. And a lot of this you don't even even need. So I have a blue Mazda pickup that we actually deleted all this stuff on and ran a Weber carburetor. And then instead of this standard exhaust manifold, we put a pace setter header on there as well. All right, so the second thing that I hate about this pickup is gonna be located in the wheel well area right here. This is a super common spot for these trucks to rust. Now, us being in Minnesota, this is an unbelievably clean truck for this area and you can see how clean it is. The only couple rust spots we got are down there on the wheel well and then this spot that we're gonna show you right now. So just hang on one second. Oh, oh I miss having a lift all the time. Ew, look at that, right there. So there is a seam in the floor of these trucks on the inside that every single one I've ever had rusts right here. Getting too old for this. So that's gonna lead us to our third thing. So that rust spot happens on both sides of these trucks. And right here in this kick panel is where the computer is housed. Now on these carbureted trucks, you do the emissions delete, you don't need this thing at all. You can throw it away, it's useless. On the EFI model, such as my four wheel drive B2600, this computer is pretty important and it's expensive to get rebuilt. The problem is that seam is right about here and sometimes it carries up into the wheel well. And what happens is the water gets in, runs down this harness and zaps the computer. This happened to me and for a while I couldn't figure it out. It happened to me when I was in tech school and I'd be driving down if it was colder than hell outside 30 below it would be fine as soon as it started to get nice nice and be like maybe 20 degrees and get a little slushy the truck would just everything would cut out it ended up being a hole and that's exactly what happened the water and slush would run down here hit the computer and short everything out again that was in my fuel injected model but nonetheless that's one of the things I hate about these trucks now we're gonna look at this mess that we got going on here and see it goes over here this got me home one day when I was Super pissed off at work. All right, so that leads us to the fourth thing that I can't stand about these pickups, and it's these ignition switches. Half of the Mazda pickups I've had, the ignition switches have went out and I've had to repair them. Now I could buy a new ignition switch, but I'm cheap and I don't wanna do that and I don't want the same thing happening again. So what happened to me at least is I'd be cruising down the road and everything would just shut off. And then on another one of my trucks, I'd have issues starting it all the time. So what I've done is I've just put a push button and toggle in. Again, I've done this on half of the Mazda pickups I've owned. I just run a wire between the starter and the coil and then I run a push button toggle so I completely bypass that issue. Then the only thing I need my key for is to unlock the steering column, that way I can still steer. And yes, I could hide that button so that you couldn't steal my truck, but I'm really not that worried about it. Plus, if you don't have any keys, good luck steering it. The first time you turn, the wheel's gonna lock up. So that is the fourth thing that drives me absolutely crazy about these Mazda pickups. All right, you guys, so the last thing I hate about my Mazda pickup, the fifth thing, is the automatic transmissions. Now you notice this one, nor my other two, are automatics. The very first Mazda pickup I had when I was a sophomore high school was an automatic transmission now these pickups if you got one that was built on a good day you got like yeah still under a hundred horsepower you pair that up with an awful slush box automatic transmission and these things were dangerously slow it can't get out of its own way but if you have a manual and you can wind it out a little bit not only is it more fun I enjoy driving manual transmissions but it kind of wakes up the B2200 was a 2.2 liter and then the 2600 was a 2.6 so this is the smallest engine that they offered the thing that I like about the B2000 is the valves were adjustable. Kind of like on the Hondas, there's a little nut on top and you can do a valve adjustment pretty easily, unlike the 2.2, which has a fixed valve train, so you can't really adjust it. But you guys, that has been five things that I absolutely hate about my Mazda pickups. Now, again, this is my B2000. 
I encompassed all of the trucks I've owned that are 86 to 93 Mazda pickups. Don't get this twisted, you guys. I love my Mazda pickups. It's just one of those things. I love the way they look. And like I said, this one is really, really clean. So I hope you guys enjoyed the Thursday video. If you liked it, drop me a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to pay attention every time we upload a video. Shift Wrench Repeat uploads every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.